Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter. With us now via Skype is Representative Henry Cuellar, Democrat from Texas and a member of the House Appropriations and the House Steering and Policy Committees. And Representative Cuellar, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Well, President Obama remains determined about the possibility of a military strike against Syria, even though the UK is backing out and a number of countries, with the exception of France, are standing back. The president is reportedly prepared to go it alone. What do you make of the president's approach here, and should the U.S. even strike Syria? Well, you know, first of all, I find it interesting that the president, I think it was some years ago, said when President Bush was there, he was saying that uh, unless there is an immediate threat or danger to the United States, uh, they need to consult and, and work uh, with Congress. And, and, and I find it interesting now he's taking the same approach that President Bush took at that time. Uh, number one. Number two, I think he, sh he should talk to, uh, to the members of Congress because there is time to address this issue. Uh, he might be afraid that maybe Congress will do the same thing that happened in, uh, in Great Britain in England uh, to the prime minister there. But nevertheless, if the president does um, take a strike, I will, I, I will support a limited strike, uh, targeted, but with no troops uh, to be sent over. We've had two, uh, two wars that have cost us over $1.2 trillion, countless of lives. So we have to make sure we understand what the specific goals are in a limited strike. But at the same time, uh, how do we uh, look at the end game? How do we get out? Uh, because I don't want to be involved in a long, long, long uh, conflict. Mm -hmm. Now, the Obama administration said on Thursday that the president has the authority to make his own decision on a military strike. You say that the president shouldn't act unilaterally, but let's say for a second that he does, as he did in Libya. Um, how will Congress hold him accountable? Well, you know, that that's something that we probably have to look at. Uh, if, if he does take the... Um, uh, follow with the strike, which I think he is. It seems to be leading that way. Uh, at that time, I will support the men and women uh, that are doing that. I don't think it would be right for Congress not to support the men and women that are doing those uh, those strikes. Um, uh, but again, I think uh, you know the president should uh, heed his words that he. I think it was in 2008 when he spoke to the Boston Globe, uh, where he said that uh, you know that unless if there's an immediate threat or danger to the United States, he should be working with Congress. I know that yesterday uh, there was a, a, a conference with uh, some of the uh, chairs and some of the uh, leadership, uh, but there are 435 members of Congress, 100 senators. Uh, there is not an immediate danger to the United States, and I think he should follow his words that he uh, gave uh, President Bush, I believe it was in 2008. Is, is Syria a U.S. national security interest and is there legal justification for a strike? We often hear about the moral justification here, but what about the legal justification? Is there one? Well, you know, you know, certainly it, it, it depends on the uh, on the definition of what's the national interest of the United States. Uh, um, you know, certainly in this case, I think it's more uh, more of a moral issue. Uh, you know, I think using the chemical warfare, uh, the weapons against the kids and other folks, is not correct. It's not the moral thing to do. Uh, there is a definition of what morality is. There's a definition of what legal, uh, the legal means are. In this case, of course, I think it's more of a morality. But again, uh, I, I, I think polls have shown that the president should consult Congress in this. But again, and I'm of that opinion, but if he does... Uh, take uh, a limited strike. I will support him. Uh, but more importantly, I'm supporting the men and women. Uh, and I think if we don't want to give any conflict, uh, conflicting messaging to our men and women that are going to be carrying out these strikes. Mm -hmm. A number of countries are putting pressure on the U.S. by demanding proof that the Assad regime was behind the chemical attacks. The president insists that the Syrian government is responsible, but many U.S. officials are using the phrase not a slam dunk to describe the intelligence picture. Who should we believe? Well, and I think this is why he needs to uh, consult Congress and talk to us. Uh, so we as policymakers of the U.S. Congress, uh, I think uh, that's why he needs to talk to us. He should convince uh, the American public uh, of that. Again, if there was an immediate danger, as the law calls for, I can understand if he takes unilateral, um, uh, a unilateral action. 
But in this case, what is the immediate danger to the United States? And therefore, I think he needs to um, uh, he needs to have that conversation uh, with the uh, with the members of Congress uh, at this time. I know he's done some very limited conversations, but I think people, you know, the congressman in Florida, congressman in Texas, and across the nation, the 435, 100 senators. In this case, I think he should talk to us. I don't like the chemical weapons that are being used. I, I don't think that's right. But again, uh, I think uh, under the circumstances, he should talk to us. Now, if they use the excuse that we're in, in, in the work period in Texas and other places, you know, I, you know, I'm ready to go back and talk to him, uh, talk to his, uh, you know, to his uh, team. Uh, but again, the uh, question is, what is the immediate danger to the United States that he needs to take unilateral action at this time? Mm -hmm. Rep. Cuellar, on a separate topic now, you're bucking your own party in opposition to Obamacare's menu labeling rulings. The FDA is set to finalize these pretty soon. And you are co-sponsoring the Bipartisan Common Sense Nutrition Disclosure Act of 2013 to roll back some of these regulations. Can you share with us your concerns? Right. And, and let me give you the over uh, my overview of uh, the health care. I did support the health care. Uh, I think now uh, both political parties are taking two extreme positions. Uh, on one side, you got Republicans that want to repeal the whole law. Uh, then on the other extreme, you got Democrats that don't want to change one single word. Uh, I think, quite honestly, I think both sides are wrong because there are some good things about the health care, but there are some things that we need to change, add, repeal, modify. The menu labeling requirement provides burdensome uh, requirements that could affect job growth uh, to you know those uh, to those businesses that don't carry the what we call the traditional uh, restaurant model. Uh, you know the you know the regulations call for putting menus or putting menu boards, but if you uh, have a convenience store, or you have a let's say Domino Pizza that has five thousand businesses, four hundred fifty three of them in Texas. Uh, and 90 percent of that business is done over the telephone, then we got to have flexibility where they can give calorie information and not use a, 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 a traditional model that doesn't apply to all the businesses. And therefore, you create um, the, the burdensome regulations that we need to have a little bit more flexibility. Is the president waging war on chain restaurants? And to what extent do regulations like these hurt our very fragile economic recovery? You know, certainly when, when we're facing a recovery like we're doing right now, we got to make sure that we understand uh, that we got to provide the incentives for businesses to create those jobs. The health care law uh, is, is one that needs to be modified. And again, there's a lot of good things of the health care law. Uh, but, you know, the two extreme positions that both parties are taking, repeal the whole thing is wrong. Uh, don't change a single word is wrong. Uh, and, and we got to have that flexibility, make those modifications and changes for the convenience stores, for those um, businesses that sell food, but don't fit the traditional uh, restaurant model that the regulations are tailored to do. One size does not fit uh, the all businesses in the United States. Last question, Representative Cuellar, is on immigration reform, which I know is a big issue in your home state of Texas. What do you make of the House's piecemeal approach to immigration reform? And considering Bob Goodlatte's remarks that House legislation will not have the path to citizenship that Democrats seek, do you think that will have a law this year? Well, you know, I don't, I, I don't uh, support amnesty like President Reagan in 1986 and the Democrats did in 1986. I don't support amnesty, but I do support a, a, a immigration reform where we do three things: sensible, strong border security. And I'm right now we're speaking. I'm about less than a mile away from the border, uh, from the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, a guest worker plan uh, that is efficient and effective to fill the jobs that Americans don't want to do, or visas, uh, so we can provide you know the the high tech folks uh, to to be able to come in. And the third thing is not amnesty, but I think we need to take those folks out of the shadows because if you don't do anything about those 11 or 12 million undocumented persons are here, you're actually giving them a de facto amnesty because you're letting them stay here. I think it's to our national interest to know who those people are. 
Uh, and anybody with a criminal record or shouldn't be here, they ought to be deported as fast as we can get them out. Uh, but I think we need to take those folks out of the, um, the shadows. Uh, the House has taken a different approach, and, uh, different from the Senate. They want to do it piecemeal. And I'm OK with that. I am OK with that. I've talked to Goodlad. I've talked to some of my Republican friends like Mario Diaz Barlett from Florida. But we got to do it uh, where we address the different issues. And if we do it piecemeal, I'm OK as long as we address the, uh, the three major issues that I mentioned. All right. Representative Henry Cuellar, Democrat from Texas, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. And you as well. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.